एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर द न्यू यूजीसी करिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम नेगोशियबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट लास्ट लेक्चर में हमने ये तो समझ लिया कि एक नेगोशियबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट क्या होता है उसकी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स क्या हैं बट हम एक पॉइंट पे रुक गए थे कि नेगोशियबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स के जब टाइप्स बताई हमने कि नेगोशियबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स एक्ट तीन टाइप के नेगोशियबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स की बात करता है जो है प्रोमिसरी नोट बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज एंड चेक वी डिड नॉट डिस्कस दीज इन डिटेल वेल For this lecture's topic, we will be discussing the characteristic features of all of these in detail, and we will try to understand कि in terms का मतलब क्या है. What do we understand by a promissory note? What do we understand by a check? What is meant by a bill of exchange? If you want to study this topic in detail, refer to the book by S. John Publishing and Vikas Publishing House. Link is provided in the description box. Hello students, welcome to S Chand Academy, and I am Kanika Kaushik. So the topic for this video lecture will be promissory note, bill of exchange, and check. So section four states that a promissory note is an instrument in writing containing an unconditional undertaking. So what are we talking about? There is an undertaking which should be unconditional. Signed by the maker, so it should be signed as well. To pay a certain sum of money only, so the sum should be certain. What are we paying? A certain sum of money only. So it should be in terms of money only, or to the order of a certain person, or to the bearer of the instrument. So in a sense, when we will be discussing the essential ingredients of a promissory note. तब स्टूडेंट्स आप ये चीज नोट करेंगे कि यही सब स्टेटमेंट्स यही सब वर्ड्स जो हमने हाईलाइट करी हैं वही टर्म्स रीअपियर होंगी वेन विल बी डिस्कसिंग देंशियल इंग्रीडियंट ऑफ अ प्रोमिसरी नोट सो लेट्स मूव अड ना वॉट आर द एसेंशियल ऑफ अ प्रोमिसरी नोट इट शुड बी इन राइटिंग एंड साइंट माई द मेकर वन सेकेंड इट शुड बी अ प्रोमिस टू पे थर्डली इट शुड बी एन अनकंडीशनल प्रोमिस Fourth, the promise should be in respect of money consideration only. Fifth, the sum should be certain, and sixth, the pay should also be certain. So now it should be in writing and signed by the maker. So in another video where contract was discussed, the essentials of a, a valid offer and acceptance did not require them to be in writing. Even an oral offer and an oral acceptance were well and valid, but when it is a negotiable instrument. it should be in writing and an oral promise will not suffice just because it is an oral promise it would not be a promissory note secondly writing does not mean that you are taking a pen and writing on the sheet of paper the times have moved ahead we have come to a technology wherein typing and printing is accessible to almost everybody so in this case even writing includes the typing and printing so if you've typed a document you've printed it that will also suffice as writing but it has to be accompanied by sign so it should be signed it is also necessary for the promissory note to be signed so now it includes a promise to pay now it should not it should be a promise to pay the promise should be express it should not be a mere acknowledgement of debt say for example if i say i owe ram 100 rupees but i am not making any promise to pay those 100 rupees right i am only acknowledging my debt towards ram so in that case if i have written a statement on a sheet of paper i have signed it that i owe ram 100 rupees he cannot come to me for the enforcement of that negotiable instrument because in a sense it is not a negotiable instrument because it is not a promise to pay it is only an acknowledgement of debt now the promise to pay words need not be there but the intention should be there so you should not be required to specifically use the words like promise to pay say for example if i say i if i write it on a sheet of paper and i sign it that i promise to pay ram 100 rupees well that will be a promissory note but i can use other words as well right that describe the same intention i may say that i owe ram 100 rupees and it is my duty to pay him back 
I am not making any promise in that case. But I am acknowledging the fact that there is a debt and I am also acknowledging that I will be paying it back. So in that case, the specific words promise to pay might not be there, yet it would be a negotiable instrument to the tune of a promissory note. Now the promise should be unconditional. It is very important for the promise to not depend on any condition or not contingent on the happening of an uncertain event. So promise to pay on fulfillment of some condition or happening of a contingency is not an unconditional promise and promise to pay on happening of an event certain to happen but the time thereof is not known like death of a person it will not be not conditional and in that case such a promise is well and valid. Say for example if I say I will make a payment of 50,000 rupees to Ram on the death of his father. Now the thing is we do not know when his father will die. But it is very certain because it is the rule of nature, it is the law of nature that a person who's taken birth is bound to die as well. So the happening of the event that Ram's father will die is very certain. But we don't know the timing thereof. So in such a case what will happen? We will not term this promise as unconditional. Now let us come to promise to pay money consideration only. So promise to pay anything other than money consideration will not constitute a valid promissory note. Yani ki agar aap kuch पेमेंट का मेंशन कर रहे हैं अपने प्रॉमिसरी नोट में तो वो मनी के टर्म्स में ही होना चाहिए आप ये नहीं कह सकते कि मैं अपनी ज्वेलरी में पे करूंगा या मैं अपनी कार उसको पेमेंट में दूंगा दैट इज नॉट अलाउड व्हेन इट कम्स टू अ प्रॉमिसरी नोट द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज सर्टेन सम द सम नीड्स टू बी सर्टेन अब वो सर्टेन सम जरूरी नहीं है कि वो से फॉर एग्जांपल अगर आपने बोला कि वो दैट इट विल बी 1000 रुपीस then it does not mean that it would be only rupees 1000. Agar usme likha hua hai ki aap koi future interest bhi include karenge. So if there is a statement that you will include interest as well, then also the sum will be certain. Or there is another case that you might uh, determine what is the sum based on a specific rate of interest. So what will happen in that case? Again, the rate of interest is specific, right? So that automatically makes the sum specific. Or it's according to the course of payment. Is that clear? So in the next video lectures, when we will be discussing about checks, we will see how the check specifies the mention of the amount in figures as well as words. But there might be a case where there is a mismatch between the words that are mentioned and the figures that are telling the amount of the sum. So in that case, section 18 comes to our rescue. Section 18 kya bolta hai? Section 18 ye kehta hai ki jab amount jo hai wo different hai when it's stated in figures and words. So if the amount undertaken or ordered to be paid is stated differently in figures and in words, the amount stated in words shall be the amount undertaken or ordered to be paid. So yani ki agar figure or words mein mismatch hai, to kya prevail karega? It would be the amount that has been mentioned in words. So now the payee should be certain. So the identity of the payee should be certain. So you should be able to identify ki jo payment ho rahi hai, wo kisko hogi? Who will be the beneficiary of that payment? Kiske account mein wo payment jani chahiye? So it does not matter if the payee is named only by his designation. At times kya hota hai agar hum kisi government job ke liye apply kar rahe hai ya hum kisi university mein koi application file kar rahe hai and that requires a payment to be made. We don't make the payment in the name of the university, right? Most often what happens? We are making the payment in the name of the registrar of the university. And registrar is basically a designation. And it is not always there that the person who was the registrar at the time of making of the application would be the registrar when the payment is supposed to be made, right? The person might change, yet the designation prevails and even if the designation is mentioned, if only the designation is mentioned, only then it will be a valid promissory note. Now the section itself stipulates certain illustrations and we'll take them one by one and discuss how these uh, illustrations do they amount to the instrument being a negotiable instrument to the tune of promissory note or not? So the first instrument is I promise to pay B or order rupees 500. So here what is happening? There is a promise to pay. Who is the pay? It is B. 
the sum is also certain it is not contingent upon anything the promise is unconditional that means it will be a valid promissory note now let's come to the second illustration it states i acknowledge myself to be indebted to b in rupees 1000 to be paid on demand for value received so now what it is he saying he is saying that he is firstly acknowledging his debt towards b to the tune of rupees 1000 and thereafter he is also saying that he will pay that money on demand in this case as well the promise is not conditional the the amount is certain the pay is certain then in this case we'll say that it is a promissory note now mr b i owe you rupees 1000 here what is he what here when the person is saying mr b i owe you rupees 1000 firstly he is not mentioning the proper terms here he is only using the capital letters i o u but also apart from that he is not making a promise to pay he is only acknowledging his debt and in this case the instrument will not be a valid promissory note coming to illustration d i promise to pay b rupees 500 and all other sums which shall be due to him now what is he saying that he promises to pay b rupees 500 and all other sums now rupees 500 is certain but can you determine what all those other sums will be no so here what is happening the amount is uncertain and when the amount is uncertain it will not be a promissory note coming to illustration e i promise to pay b rupees 500 first deducting there out any money which he may owe me again the 500 rupees are certain but what all deductions he will be making it is not certain right so the total amount that is supposed to be paid is uncertain then again it will not be a valid promissory note coming to illustration f i promise to pay b rupees 500 seven days after my marriage with c so firstly it is not sure whether that person will get married or not right it is that person's choice and there might be a possibility that person might not get married ever and secondly what is the probability of that person getting married to a particular person you cannot make a forecast about it right so in this case it is dependent upon an event which might or might not happen that means it is an unconditional promise and when the promise is unconditional it will not be a valid promissory note finally i promise to pay b rupees 500 on d's death providing d leaves me enough to pay that sum so now d's death is a certain event it is bound to happen it is the law of nature but what is the possibility that d will be leaving enough sum for the person who is making that instrument to pay to b right अब उसकी क्या सर्टेनिटी है कि डी उतना पैसा छोड़ के जाएगा उसके लिए वो पॉसिबिलिटी नहीं है उसके लिए हम श्योर नहीं है इन दैट केस वी विल से दैट इट इज एन अनकंडीशनल प्रॉमिस एंड व्हेन इट इज एन अनकंडीशनल प्रॉमिस वी सिग्निफाई दैट इट इज नॉट अ वैलिड प्रॉमिसरी नोट सो स्टूडेंट्स एज ऑफ नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड व्हाट इज अ प्रॉमिसरी नोट वी डिस्कस द एसेंशियल इंग्रेडिएंट्स ऑफ अ प्रॉमिसरी नोट एंड देयर आफ्टर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द वेरियस इलस्ट्रेशंस दैट आर मेंशनड in section 4 so students right now we'll pause for a break and when we'll come back we'll be discussing about what is a bill of exchange and what is a check now quality learning is easily available at your doorstep s chand academy brings detailed lectures based on ugc curriculum as per the new education policy 2020 so do not forget to subscribe to the S Chand Academy and access the wide world of knowledge conveniently sitting within the comfort of your home. Stay connected and keep watching S Chand Academy. Happy learning! So students, welcome back to S Chand Academy. And in this lecture, we are discussing about the three types of negotiable instruments, which is a promissory note, a bill of exchange and a check. So before going on for a break, we discuss what is a promissory note. We discuss the essential ingredients of a promissory note. Now remember that these ingredients hold a lot of significance in the course of this lecture ahead as well. Because the jojo ingredients we discussed were that an instrument should be in writing, it should be signed, it should be unconditional, the pay should be certain, the amount should be certain. 
these apply to a bill of exchange as well with certain modifications. So please note that आगे के वीडियो में हम उनको specifically repeat नहीं करेंगे, but वो concepts जो हमने अभी discuss करे हैं, they apply to the bill of exchanges and checks as well. तो जहाँ जहाँ पे कुछ modifications होगा, that would be properly highlighted to you. So now section five defines a bill of exchange. So according to section five, a bill of exchange is an instrument in writing. Again, see the term is reappearing, containing an unconditional order. Signed by the maker, directing a certain person to pay a certain sum of money only to or to the order of a certain person or to the bearer of the instrument. So now, what do we understand here? That writing may है, unconditional है, signed है, certain person दो बार आ रहा है. क्यों? क्योंकि यहाँ पे तीन parties involved हैं. When we'll be moving ahead, we'll be discussing that as well. To pay a certain sum of money only to the order of a certain person. So now let us try to understand this with an example. Say there is a person A who has to make a payment to person B. And he is directly making that payment and he has mentioned that I promise to pay B 100 rupees or 1000 rupees whatever is the amount. Now this is a promissory note. But if a third person is involved in it then it will become a bill of exchange. Say for example, A will direct C to make a payment to B. So in this case what is happening? A third person is getting involved and that is why when I say that यहाँ पे certain person दो बार mentioned है, वो इसलिए क्योंकि हमारा person B भी certain होना चाहिए, हमारा person C भी certain होना चाहिए. So students, let us try to understand the essentials of a bill of exchange through this flowchart. So हम इसको पूरा detail में discuss नहीं करेंगे, because जो हमारे essentials हैं वो somehow similar हैं जो हमने promissory note के essentials को देखा था. वही similar essentials are there in a bill of exchange as well. जो थोड़े बहुत differences हैं हम उनको discuss करते हैं. So the certain pay and certain draw. यानी कि हमारा जो pay है और जो हमारा draw है, वो दोनों certain होने चाहिए. अब एक bill of exchange में let us take an example again. A has to pay money to B and he draws a bill of exchange with C as the drawee and B as the pay. Yani ki humara jo B person hai aur C person hai, wo dono certain honi chahiye. Secondly, the amount should be certain. Yani ki aapki instrument pe jo specific amount likha hooga, wo certain hona chahiye, wo uncertain nahi hona chahiye. Aap aise nahi kya sakte ki jitna bhi amount B ko due hai, aap ho saara pay kar do. No, you have to come up with a figure and you have to tell that figure, you have to tell that exact number. Then it is to be an order in respect of money consideration only. So, yani ki aap isme sirf money ki baat karenge. You will not be talking about paying that particular liability in any other form. You will not talk about paying it in say in terms of value of gold or in terms of any other goods. Then it is supposed to be an unconditional order. Koi qualified nahi hona chahiye wo order. So now it is unconditional, that means कोई और conditions attached नहीं है। जैसा वो particular order बोल रहा है, वो ऐसे ही करना है, उसमें आप कोई specific conditions attach नहीं कर सकते कि C make the payment to B only if B does that. No, irrespective of what B does or B does B does or B refuses to do, you are make to you you are supposed to make the payment. Then it is an order. Order कौन दे रहा है? किसको दे रहा है? So here A is giving an order to C to make the payment to B. अगर हम promissory note को देखें तो promissory note में क्या था? We had two parties A and B and A was making a promise to B. यहाँ पे क्या है? Here it is a promise, but here it is an order to C कि आप B को payment करो. And finally it should be in writing. And signed by the maker. तो जब जब ये essentials qualify होंगे, जब ये सारे essentials को आप meet कर रहे हैं, तब हम कहेंगे कि वो एक valid bill of exchange है. So now let's move ahead. Now, just now we've discussed how a promissory note and bill of exchange are different, right? Because a bill of exchange involves three parties. So who all will be the parties in the bill of exchange? The first one will be a drawer. The second would be a drawee. And third one will be the payee. So here the person who makes the bill of exchange. 
जिसने उस बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज को बनाया है जैसे हमारे एग्जाम्पल में था ए ए विल बी द ड्रॉवर ऑफ द बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज नाउ द पर्सन ऑन होम द बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज इज ड्रॉन इज द ड्रॉइ नाउ द बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज इन आर एग्जाम्पल इट स्टेटेड इट गिव एन ऑर्डर टू सी टू मेक अ पेमेंट टू बी राइट सो ऑर्डर किसको दिया गया ऑर्डर दिया गया सी को सो हियर सी विल बी द ड्रॉइ and pay will be the person in whose favor the bill of exchange has been done c ko humne kya order diya tha a ne c ko ye order diya tha ki b ko payment karni hai yani payment kiske favor mein ja rahi hai b ke favor mein ja rahi hai so in that case what will happen b will be the pay is that clear now let us come to what does a check mean so check has been defined in section 6 uh, it states a check is a bill of exchange drawn on a specified banker and not expressed to be payable otherwise than on demand and it includes the electronic image of a truncated check and a check in the electronic form so what do we mean from this yani ki ye ek check ek bill of exchange hai ek bill of exchange ka hi type hai but usme kya specificity aa jati hai ki it is firstly drawn on a specified banker and secondly that it is payable only on demand so now amendments aaye the law mein kyunki 1881 ke time pe to kuch electronic cheeze nahi thi amendments ke baad we have included the electronic image of a truncated check and also a check in the electronic form so this discussion states that firstly it is a special type of bill of exchange and secondly that it is drawn upon a specific banker so now here is an example of a check and you can see that a check specifies certain places jahan pe aapko amount likhna hai it has it has to be mentioned in words as well as figures it has a provision for signing of the check there is a space specifically mentioned jahan pe check book jiske name mein issued hai uska naam mentioned hai aur aapko wahan pe sign karna hai you have to mention the name of the person jiske favor mein aap check draw kar rahe hain so this example of a check and you can anyways go and ask your parents to show a check to you or if you have a check book just go have a look at it and you will have a real hand experience about how a check looks like and what all are the essential ingredients that you're supposed to mention on a check so students in this video lecture we discussed about the three types of a negotiable instrument which are mentioned under the negotiable instruments act of 1881 so the first one was a promissory note we discussed what is a promissory note and we discussed at length what all are the essential ingredients of a promissory note secondly we discussed what is a bill of exchange and we discussed in brief the various essential ingredients of a bill of exchange we did not go into the details thereof because there is an overlap between the essential ingredients of a promissory note and a bill of exchange and finally we discussed what is a check according to section 6 of the negotiable instruments act and we discussed how a check is nothing but a special type of bill of exchange which is drawn on a specific banker thank you if you want to study this topic in detail refer to the book by s john publishing and vikas publishing house link is provided in the description box if you found our video interesting please like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.